Well, welcome everyone to our Ada J Author 5.0 rollout. Um, we'll call it our launch party today because we're super excited to be getting this out to you. Um, this is Jessica Frank with the Center for Access to Justice and Technology at Chicago Kent. And with me, I have John Mayer, the Executive Director of Cali. Hey, yo. A couple of things before we get started. Sarah Glassmeyer from Cali is monitoring the questions, so if there are ones that need, you know, need us to be stopped and go over them right at the time, we can do that. If not, we'll hold questions to the end. Okay, so we have a pretty extensive agenda today, but we're going to move through it fairly quickly. Today's webinar is meant to show you A to J Author 5.0 and to answer some introductory questions. We'll go more in-depth into the different specific how-tos and troubleshooting that kind of stuff in future trainings in the months to come. A to J Author 5.0 is cloud-based. You no longer have to download A to J Author 4.0 to use it. So there's no downloading of software. It's all cloud-based. Yay, if you all were on mute, I'm sure I would hear plenty of applause and clapping. To access the new authoring tool, you need to visit our new A to J Author.org website. Our new a to j author.org website requires you to register again. Even if you had an account on the old website, you need a new account on this new website. Speaking of the old site, it still exists. So if you still want to download 4.0 or see any of our training materials in 4.0, you can go to old.a2jauthor.org. That's old.a2jauthor.org. But the new tool is at plain old a to j author .org. And before you can access the authoring tool, you need to be authenticated. So you need to provide us with a little bit of information about who you are, where you're working for, kind of what you'll be using a to j author 5.0 for, um, which will, uh, further instructions are on the website and you'll get an email um, bounce back with a little survey in it to fill out. If there are any problems, feel free to email me at jbolak at kentlaw.iit.edu or you can email webmaster at adajauthor.org. So once you're registered and authenticated, you click the author button at the top of the screen. It looks like a pencil and a piece of paper. You just click author and it opens up adajauthor 5.0. This is your main screen that you're gonna see when you open up 5.0. And here's where you can create new interviews. You can open existing 5.0 ones that you've been working on and you can upload your 4.0 interviews to convert to 5.0 interviews. If you double click on any one of your interviews, it opens it up. So here is a screenshot I double clicked on the top one blank interview. This should look familiar to you. This blank interview, just like in 4.0, comes with four preloaded questions. The intro, the name, the gender, and then a blank step one. The first tab down the left navigation bar is the about tab just like in 4.0. It holds that same metadata that you would have stored in 4.0 plus some. So since I made this screenshot, Sam Goshorn, who's our programmer um, and the creator of A to J Author, added in a couple new languages. So here the screenshot is just showing four. We currently have five languages um, able to be used with A to J Author 5.0. English, Spanish, Vietnamese, Korean, and simplified Chinese. We also have French in the works, um, so that'll be coming out in the next couple of months. If we go down the About tab, also is a little bit different from the Authoring tab in um, A to J4. It lets you put in more information. So you can put in multiple authors. This is helpful if you have multiple people on your staff working on it, or someone's an original author and then five years down the line, you're stuck with it and you have to update it. This allows you to add in your information as well. This allows you to have your, the author's name, the title, their organization, and their email so that you can follow up with them later. This is also helpful if you have, say, A to J clinic students who are making your um, guided interviews for you. You can have their contact information to then contact later when you're putting it on your site, like, why did you do this? Or, you can get further explanation from them. We have three new avatars, new avatar skin tones. We have six new avatars in the guide section, three females and three males. And instead of blank and tan, we now have avatars one, two, and three. When you upload a 4.0 interview, blank will become uh, avatar one, tan will become avatar two, 
and then you always have the option to select from uh, to select avatar three. You, as the author, control the skin tone for all avatars in the interview. The guide avatar and the end as end user avatar both have the same skin tone, and you control that. You also have the ability to control the gender of the guide avatar, so you can select either the female or the male. This is John Mayer. Hi, folks. This is this is an area that's not completely settled. There's obviously the problem that if uh, if you if you choose an avatar of one skin tone and then the user comes in and they're not that skin tone, then then will that cause uh, grief or problems or something like that? We've got some ideas on how to on how to smoothly handle that, but they're not ready to uh, to show you just yet. So I just wanted to I just wanted to jump in and say that we're we're still our, our thinking is continuing to evolve on 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 how to best handle uh, the uh, the avatars in A to J five. So moving on from the avatars, the next tab down is the variables tab. So this is just like in 4.0. You create new interview you create new variables. You can say what type they are if they're repeating. You can have comments about the variables. And we are working right now on allowing the upload of hot docs variables like we had in 4.0. So currently you're going to have to create those new, but we're working on that right now. The question list that used to be next to the flowchart in 4.0 now has its own tab. It's called pages. And pages shows both the question pages and any pop-ups that you have as well. My sample interview here doesn't have any pop-ups, but if you look to the bottom of the screenshot, right above the blue buttons, you can see that there is room for pop-ups. The, the questions are by step and alphanumerically. The cool thing about the steps is that they're collapsible now. So if you have a guided interview with 12 steps, you can collapse it down so that you can only work on step one, step two, you know, you can focus in on where you're working. 5.0's flowchart is, or as we now call it, the map is a little bit less graphical than 4.0's. You can see 4.0's at the top. We used Flash, as you may know, for 4.0. So Flash is great for images and showing this map. It's beautiful. But Flash isn't so great for everything else. So with JavaScript, which we're using now, it's great for everything else. Its mapper is a little less graphical. But it still does the same functions that you use in 4.0. You can open questions. You can move them around. You can see kind of the the forest for the trees. Instead of when you're focused on the question list, you can only see kind of each individual tree. You can see big picture with the mapper. Hi, Jessica. In, in what I hope is not a, uh, a broken record sound, um, the mapper is another area of, of continuing um, evol evolution. Um, there, are, there are some awesome tools out there that make great maps. But, but but some are not open source or or uh, where you can e edit the source code, and some of them are expensive, uh, rather in cost or in uh, time to devote to to uh, get to accomplishing what we want, you know. And so and so we've we've gone with a, a relatively straightforward solution until we uh, you know settle on something that that makes the best sense. Um, this is another new tab. We have, it's called files. Files show you all the files that are attached to your guided interview. This was previously only available to see in the upload tab when you were going to upload your interv interviews to LHI or to your own server. But now you can see all of the audio, MP3s, videos, and pictures that are attached to your guide, guided interview. The upload tab is now called publish. We're currently working with LHI's tech team to establish a procedure for uploading 5.0 interviews to their server. And we're also working on how you'll host your own server, but you can currently download a zip file containing all your guided interview and all of your um, XML, audio, video, pictures, all that into a zip, or you can just download your A to J5 file. A really cool new feature is called All Logic. It shows all of the logic and the advanced conditions running in your guided interview. So the red sections are error breaks, and you get a little yellow message telling you what's broken. So when I first saw this and we were first testing it, I was very scared of all the errors and all the error messages. But it's actually not as scary as you might think. A lot of the errors are just kind of careless errors. You forgot an extra parenthesis to close it off. You forgot to close off your, your quotes at the end, something like that. I've actually created an FAQ that is um, available on adajauthor.org. This is the link, but I can go out and show it to you. It's right here off of our home page. This is the main page. Once you are logged in and authenticated, see this page right here under frequently asked questions. 
it opens up and here's the question, what do the error messages mean? If you click on it, I have answered it with, currently there are eight examples. So I give you the code that broke that would have been showing that would have been showing red in the guide to interview. I um, italicized the um, error message from JavaScript, and I also emboldened where the ac the actual error exists. So for this example in this one, you can't have an apostrophe in your variable name. You just have to take out the apostrophe, and the error is gone. Um, the second one, you can't have a pound sign standing alone. So this, you, you might, if you're an advanced author, use um, repeat loops and um, indices, and use like pound child count, pound asset count. That's fine. You can have a pound and a word after it. You just can't have the pound standing by itself. Here, the third one down is there is an author put the word or twice. So that was just a little careless drafting error. 5.0 is a little bit, is a lot a bit stricter than 4.0 was. So some of these you're just going to have to comb through and find your errors. But this guide, um, I'll keep adding any logic errors that I see, and you can, as an authenticated user, add, add additional comments as you see them too. Jessica, this is John again. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this and this list represents um, some, something that was a lot longer or more complicated that 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 we're that, that we've sort of beaten beaten into sub, into submission, uh, which which is to say that you're we, we used to be fairly permissive in A to J four because because we sort of knew the intent of what authors were doing when they were doing advanced conditions, right? There were, when you did an advanced condition, there was a pull down list, we sort of, we, we constricted what you could do and so therefore we, we could guess pretty much what you would do. And, and now we're going to let you type things like if, then, else, and so on. And so the, uh, 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 the code or the logic has to be more precise. It's, it's, it's closer to a programming language than, than uh, the previous version. And, and as much as possible, um, Sam has put a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, automatic fixes in the background, but but, there were, but everywhere where we came upon something where it was ambiguous, we decided it was safer to, sit, to throw the error and, and let you, the author, or, 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 or fix it, you know, let a human being's uh, wetware come into play to, uh, to fix the problem, just so that there was no ambiguity about, uh, about any automated fix. We think we've minimized your work as much as possible, but 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 with this rollout, uh, we're gonna we're gonna find out uh, how good or bad a job uh, we did with that, and uh, we're we, we we crave your feedback on this uh, to see if we can uh, find other opportunities to make uh, make the conversions as smooth as possible. And one just to point out that um, maybe a kind of a big one or that you'd recognize um, doing variable macros within an advanced condition by doing the percent sign percent sign variable name percent sign percent sign that breaks in A to J in A to J author 5 so you cannot have the double percent signs in your logic code you don't even actually need them anymore to call out the value in the logic um, so those are kind of easy fixes where if you're you're uploading your 4.0 interview and there's a lot of red that's kind of a big one if you use variable macros a lot and it's a very easy fix you just delete those percent signs they're gone, it still does the same thing that you wanted it to do. And then and the last new tab is all text. It's pretty self-explanatory. It gives you all the text that is in your guided interview. It is a cool feature though that you can do a control F, search for a specific word, and it highlights it just like if you were control Fing in a Word document or in a, um, a regular browser screen. And so say you spelled judgment wrong, in your variable or, or you spelled it wrong in your question a couple of times or you spelled guardian wrong, you can go through and fix those errors very quickly instead of having to click through all of your questions and hopefully hit all the times that you or someone else spelled it wrong. So that's a, um, a really great time-saving tool. Let me, let me jump in and say, for you experienced authors, this has got to be a godsend because it gives you a god's eye view of your, of your interview. You can, you can go through and change text and, uh, all over the place. Um, and on the All Logic tab, you can go through and change uh, you know, the uh, conditions all over the place instead of having to open, close, open, close, open, close, like Jessica said. So um, I, I'm, I'm hoping this, is, this will be a, a really useful uh, time saver for you folks. 
Okay, so the preview should look very familiar to you. It looks like 4.0, it's just refreshed. So we have our new avatar, we have our new courthouse in the back, um, and it pretty much does the same things that you were used to doing um, in 4.0 with preview. You can open up the scripting window so um, and the variable list by either clicking the variable slash script button at the bottom, which is circled, or you can double click on the A to J author logo and it will open this as well. And instead of opening in separate windows or in separate little pop-outs that it did in 4.0, it opens to the left. Um, you can sort your A to J author, um, the, the variables. You can also filter by variable. So if you started typing in CHI, all the child ones would show up and all the other variables would drop out. You can see what's going on in the back end while you're testing your interview in the scripting, um, scripting box, just like you could do in 4.0 as well. You, um, there's, a little, there's a little tiny uh, button down there called fill, and, 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 what that, and, and that, that's tied into something else. Every time you create a field inside of um, uh, your, your interview and when you're authoring, okay. there, there is a, um, there, there's another field you can fill in that's called, um, I think it's called sample value. I hope I'm getting that right. So in other words, as you create fields, you can enter a sample value. So, you, you know, so like if you're creating a field called last name, then you could put in a sample value, test last name or something like that. So the value of this is when you're previewing your interview, um, you can just click the fill button and it will automatically take the sample value and dump it in there. And, and the, the, the point of this is if you have to test something a zillion times, you know the, the pain of having to like, oh yeah, I've got to fill in this field because I'm trying to get past these questions to get to the part that I want to test. Well, the, it's a one button, fill, done, fill, done, fill, done. It should greatly speed going through long sets of interviews or long sets of questions uh, to be able to, to be able to test things as long as there's some sample value there. I mean, th this, this is one of those situations where we had, we're, 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 while we're developing, we're like, oh man, this is painful. And so we scratch our own itch by building a capability in and then uh, realize, oh, wait, this, is, this would be valuable to uh, authors as well. Um, you know, so I, I'm, I'm interested to hear uh, wh whether or not that, that is as useful to you as, a, as it was to us. And, uh, and that's all I wanted to say about that. Well, up, yeah, up, update is if you're running an interview in, 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 the, in the preview pane and uh, the uh, A to J, the list of variables isn't keeping up, you can click update to sort of force that because that's two, it's two browser frames talking to each other. Um, but uh, but my, my suspicion is that, that sometimes those are slightly out of sync and update forces uh, the, the, the syncing up of, that, of those values. I'm, I, the, the, prob the problem is there's so many things to show. So yeah, I, I can be the presenter and I'll, I'll do the demo. Okay. Um, but I'll, but I'll, I'll, I'll preface all this by saying I'm just going to show you a couple of things um, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll wait for other opportunities to, to do uh, things that are more um, uh, comprehensive. Um, and then we'll open it up for questions right away because I don't want to take up uh, you know, a lot of your time. We're going to... You know, there's going to be plenty of opportunities to, to talk about this and get feedback. You might um, want to show. Some, yeah, we can see it. You might want to show them the report. That's kind of a cool feature too. Yes, yes, yes. Geez, I don't know where to start. I'm. Oh, this is so exciting. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, and as a matter of fact, I'm. You know, behind the scenes, I'm working on an article, which is like a, what I call ten small cool things about A to J five. Um, one of them I just talked about was that um, sample values, but. Um, but let me. But yeah, let's go into let's let's talk about the report real quick. Um, so down there here is a is a report tab. I'm going to blow this up just a little bit. And when you click on full report, yeah, I've got the New York surrogate just because they're. Um, this I, I just love this interview because it's so big and, and complicated. Um, <coughs> so I was going to show you the the uh, the full report, which is uh, not that interesting except for um, a new feature that we're working on, and it's actually a, a separate TIG. Um, we're working with uh, Law uh, New York and uh, you know Jeff Hogue and Ann Heinlein. Um, originally started this, but through our uh, our great folks at Idaho. So so here's some text that was that's that's part of a question. 
and the, the part I want to point out is down at the bottom there, it shows the, um, it shows the grade level of the uh, text based on four different, uh, one, two, three, four, yeah, based on four different algorithms that, uh, that calculate readability based on sentence length, syllables, words per sentence, things like that. Flesh Kincaid, Gunning Fogg, Smog Index, and the Coleman Lau Index. And if you're like me, when you start out with this, you don't know what those mean. Well, you can click on those, and it will go to the uh, Wikipedia article that explains those things. Um, what's the point of this? Well, notice that the grade level for this is 8.4, and um, an acceptable or, or a generally acceptable grade level for, uh, for text for uh, prosaes would be below eighth grade level. And so we've colored this uh, yellow to, to show that you know, if there's something that you can do to um, to simplify the language, then this might be a place to uh, to to uh, put your attention on for for that sort of thing. Um, the second thing about this, let me see if I can find one that's got a red. Um, I should have uh, preloaded this. There's a red, but this is this is actually a this is an example in two ways. You notice that the Flesh Kincaid score is uh, 14.8. Efficacy of these algorithms um, is 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 lower for the smaller amount of text that you use. In other words, you, you can get a grade level count for one sentence, but it's not really going to give you excellent feedback on on readability. So this would be like a false positive. You would not go in and change this. This is fine as far as readability. And in fact, this follows uh, the readability guideline that you want to break things up into lists or into bullets to make them more readable on the screen. Um, there's a whole bunch of other uh, icky details that we're working on to try to make this more uh, positively useful. Um, but I just wanted to show that. And let me also show at the very bottom of the thing. Um, so at the very bottom is, uh, is, the, is the Flesh Kincaid scores and the, the readability scores for the entire interview. And you'll see that it's at 6.4. So in other words, there might be individual parts that because uh, there, there, there isn't enough uh, text there to really uh, accurately measure, or um, you know that's the number you got because you had a particularly complex you know uh, terms of service or something like that. But overall, the average readability is at a 6.4, and there and there, so we color it green to uh, make you feel good about that. Um, for the um, reports, those of you that teach students or work with students or interns building guided interviews, this is huge. I find with working with our students that they are lawyers in training and they love to use their $50 words. Um, and so ha I'm constantly writing on there when I print their reports, like this plain language, plain language, plain language, plain language, over and over again. And now I can just print this and be like, clearly you need to work on this. All your, letter all your sections are read. And so this will give them a really easy way to test for if they're fitting into that plain language. So I love it. And a lot of you teachers out there might, or professors out there might like it too. Um, some other things that I wanted to show that you, that you couldn't see from, the, uh, from the, uh, the PowerPoints. This is what she meant by uh, collapse and, and expand. I can collapse all my steps. And if I want to just go down and open up step six, and now I'm just working on those questions within step six. You know, double click on any page. And now I'm working inside just that page. These funny little icons here, these are meant to be sort of a, uh, a visual uh, cue as to how complicated or, or where stuff is on your pages. So I can see that there's a, a couple of text boxes, there's a text picks, there's a gender question, there's a help button, and, a logic, and there's some logic in this one. So, so if you wanted to quickly find out where you've put all your logic, your code, you can scan through these things and just look for those. RB are uh, radio buttons. Um, I'm trying to think of what else there. Uh, here's a zip code example. You know, we, we ex you 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 sort of can't tell what these are until you work in the uh, work in the tool for a while. But then they then they become sort of little reminder signposts that help you uh, uh, that help especially you you experienced authors um, quickly find stuff. The circle arrow thing is the repeat loops, which you should recognize from 4.0. That was on the mapper, but now it's in the yes. question list. That's, that's right. That's right. We we tried to use uh, similar or as much as mu as much as possible similar iconography uh, to help along with that. We we really we, uh, we really had a tough problem here. Um, we we wanted to help out. I mean, you you experienced authors, uh, you know, who are doing two or three hundred question or even larger interviews. Um, 
you know, gave us so much excellent um, feedback over the over the years, you know, on the doc assembly list. And and trust me, we were listening. And and all of that went into well, how can we, you know, how can we put things in here that will make those, uh, you know, make some of that pain go away. At the same time, we're expanding the use of this tool into law schools, where law students are going to show up, spend a, you know, a couple of hours learning how to use it, jump right in and start uh, automating a, a form or a process, you know, and then they're gone by the end of the semester. And so they, they, the vast majority of them will never become experienced authors like you all are. And so, so. We, we, we couldn't have too many things in there that require only experienced authors to be able to uh, create uh, guided interviews if we wanted to expand the pool of potential authors. So oh, um, on, the, uh, on the expand collapse, um, that also works in some other places. So here on the About tab, you'll notice there's like five or six sections. But if you wanted to uh, do a collapse all, you can collapse down those sections and then just go to the one you want and click on the section header and open it up and work on that. Um, I, I, I just find those little things to be immensely uh, satisfying to, to, you know, quickly, quickly get me to where I need to go so, you know, don't make me over, you know, click five times just to find stuff. I, that, that drives me crazy on, uh, on, uh, on websites. Um, and that's it. So I could I could go on all day, but I'm going to uh, stop there and just say let's open it up for some questions, and uh, remind everybody that there will be more extensive trainings um, in the future, and we're also going to be um, you know uh, adding features and um, capabilities uh, even going forward. This is a this is this is not A to J five. This is like A to J one in the new in the new uh, in the new platform. Um, and so we, we view this as a, as the beginning of a, of of a, of a, of a series of uh, is a beginning of uh, being able to develop new capabilities for this uh, for this tool. So John, I'll read off some of the questions that have come in while you were demoing. Um, following up on the online intake question um, about being able to use them like we did in four, Bob wants to know if we're using PHP the same way, the server files. So you can the, the short answer the, the the short answer is is uh, A to J the viewer will will send the answer file to a server and the server can can have any um, server based uh, uh, programming language that it wants scripting system that it wants to capture the answer file and then uh, turn it into an XSLT you know uh, use XSLT to transform it into something else. So the short answer is yes, PHP will work. Um, but for those of you who, who, who use .NET or, uh, or or Python or other things, that will also be uh, eminently possible. I could have uh, just said yes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Stephen was asking, have we changed the date functions to make them as functional as in Hot Docs? Oh, oh man, asking the hard ones, huh? Um, <laughs> The, the, the short answer is the date functions are better, um, but they're not as good as I, I would like them to be, or, or Sam uh, would like them to be yet. And, and they're not yet, and, 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 I'm, and I don't know if I can even say that they will ever be as, as, as good as Hot Docs. Hot Docs' date capabilities are, are tremendous. Um, and and we're, we're not trying to copy them as much as um, um, handle the similar capabilities in a way that makes sense. So, um, so better than it was. Getting better all the time. Probably never going to be, you know, at the level of of, of hot docs, though. Another question um, Claudia mentioned was about the browsers. So, um, the browser capabilities are um, currently IE10 or better. Also, Chrome and Firefox work because they're HTML5, um, and we know that there are a lot of courts and legal aids that might be using IE8 or IE9. Chrome works on those machines, so that would be our suggestion. But we are um, we're making this for the future. So yeah. right, and so 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 this is this is what we this is what we we can promise today. We haven't tested extensively down browser, you know, down nine, eight, and so on. 
um, some of the initial tests have been have been a little scary, um, and so and so we're we're so so for today we're sticking with IE10 with which is the you know I think they're at IE11 right now, and and we'll see how that goes with being able to support uh, less capable browsers. It, it's not it, it's both a technical problem and it's a, a little bit of a philosophical stance, in the sense that. This is the beginning of a platform, and and we want to be we want to we want to break from the past. And if that requires that, and if that causes some pain for the for for the for folks that can't get their browsers upgraded, then then we want to be an incentive for them to upgrade their browsers. Thanks. Um, question from Gray: What about string functions? Are there more options? For example, left, right, mid. Oh, I totally know what that means, Gray. <laughs> so th th that's a that's a great question. Wow. So the, the the short answer is we we we're beginning by supporting everything that A to J four supported because you know you have that in your in your guided interviews now, and we have to do that. And and then the longer answer is that's that's a place where we know we can add a lot of capabilities, but it was a matter of uh, get get it to work on the existing ecology, add capability going forward. So, so Gray, we're we're programmers here. We would love to see more more capabilities, more more functions like that, and uh, and we have a framework in place to be able to do that. So we're uh, so so we will be adding more more functions there. Yes. The good thing about this one is you don't have to download a new version every time we make adjustments. So that's a big plus that we can do these kind of faster. <laughs> Good then. point. Cloud-based, so cloud-based single-page web app. This is the, there's a name for these things. They're called SPAs, single-page apps, because every time you go to the uh, go to this page, you know, 300k of JavaScript is is downloaded on that first page. You know, it takes a second or two, but now you're running the app entirely locally. It's running inside your browser. This was not possible 10 years ago because JavaScript was ugly, slow. You know, there was no Gmail 10 years ago. It was, it's the whole, th this is the result of the Web 2.0 revolution where JavaScript became a, a and, and CSS and, and, uh, and HTML5 coming up have, have, have become a capable development environment that, to do things that you just couldn't have done uh, many years ago. Um, and, and, and Jessica's right, you know, we, we, can, we can add fixes and, and, uh, and features, you know, without you having to do anything. Just, just come back to the website again and do the work there. Okay, Mike has a question about how does version control work? Why don't you unmute Mike because I don't know what, if he means version control of what? Of the guided interviews? Or? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll assume he means uh, versions of, of the guided interviews. Um, Oh. That is what I mean. I got him unmuted. That that is exactly what I mean. So it shouldn't be a problem because it, it, if if you mean between four and five, there's a there's a bright line between those two, but five and versions going forward will will support everything. You know, as we add features, old old five O guided interviews will continue to work. And is there going to be a way to save? revisions of individual interviews as we go along, uh, rather than having to save entirely new interviews? I, I think the short answer is, is yes and no. Um, as, as you notice, there is no save button on any of this. And that's because right. as you type, everything is automatically saved. It's every um, five minutes. Um, that's what yeah, it might even. It, yeah, but I if see. you switch between different things, it saves auto automatically as well. Right, 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 and and uh, and we should probably clarify that in FAQ uh, very precisely so that people don't get scared that they're uh, you know they oh I closed my browser how much did I lose you know things like that. Um, if anything, we want to be aggressive about uh, preserving you know your work, um, sort of like the way you know Gmail saves a draft or something like that. Um, not to say that we're Google. There is a um, uh, a way to I mean you can you can make local copies of your stuff. You can download zip file which is basically your guided interview plus all the media files or you can just download the uh, the A to J file itself the XML that that is the interview if you're if you're nervous about our website and you should be right don't trust anybody you know so that you have a local copy uh, as a backup uh, at any time but the files page is 
probably an area, sorry, not the files page, the interviews page tab is probably an area where we will, where, where I'd love to talk to you about what, what, what type of capabilities do we need there to, to make this work uh, with your workflow. So, so I hear what you're saying, that, there, that we need some sort of version control or file management control, but, uh, but I'm not exactly sure what, what the best solution is. If you guys okay, do great. have... It looks great. If you guys do have suggestions once you're in and start poking around, please email me, um, and I can at pass them on to Sam and John. I'll put them in our issue tracker, and, and then I won't be the only one bugging them with issues. So it'll be good. <laughs> We have another question from Carol that says, if I'm offline, heaven forbid, will there be any way to work on an interview? No. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an online authoring system. So it's, it's yeah, I, I guess the equivalent is, uh, can, I, um, can I work on my email when I'm offline? Although, although I, I'm probably Google's a bad example because they're a $100 billion company. Um, but it, it's, it's a website. And so you have to be on, on the web to be able to do this. And with the autosave, at least, you'll know that if you lose connectivity, it'll still be there. You don't have to, yes. you didn't forget to save. Yes. So that's a bonus. There will be plenty of opportunity for <laughs> questions, and I'm, I'm on the doc assembly list, and um, we, I fully expect that, that there will there'll be a lot of dialogue um, you know, going forward here. All right, well, thank you, everyone, for coming. And we have a new user webinar next Thursday that I'll put out on the, the listservs. Um, it's our standard A to J author new user webinar. That's once a month. Um, but I'm taking it over, and we're going to be talking about 5.0. And we'll do kind of an intro to 5.0. So thank you all very much. Thanks, folks.